Hello my soccer universe, we have a World Cup final, in some sense you would say the dream final if there wasn't for two underdogs in there, but it's definitely the superstar final a battle for the third star, one of these nations will win the World Cup for the third time um, and the other one will remain at two, it is also a World Cup final that will pitch Messi against Mbappe, the two colleagues from uh, PSG, who is of course funded by Qatar, so the Qataris will be very very happy with that final as well. But I wanna, don't want to get ahead of myself and preview the final, I might do this in a separate video on the weekend. I want to talk actually about the semi-finals, which statistically were, this was the most decisive semi-final. So far, there's only been one semi-final, uh, you know, in the modern era that has been decided by more than a goal, I think since 82. And that was, of course, the 7-1 of Germany. And now we had two decided by uh, more than, than, than a goal. So it was rather one-sided. What's um, interesting to me is that both games for large paths didn't feel so one-sided. It is just that um, more experienced or, you know, the team with more status had a situation where uh, the underdog kind of cracked, cracked early and it went their way. Do you remember many chances like, apart from the goals for Argentina? Not really. I mean, I don't remember ones for Croatia either, but I also, I really thought that Croatia up until that penalty had the game relatively under control without threatening. And similarly, France, while they took the early lead and then were for large uh, parts in control of the game, it also seemed that decisions are going their way. There was a potential penalty shout in there. Um, and then Morocco just, they, they, they created chances but couldn't finish them. And it needed, Deshaun, uh, needed to make a tactical adjustment by putting five in midfield to uh, get the game under control again. And so it seemed that he did everything right. And same thing for Scaloni. But there was always the danger if there's just one ball of the op opposition going in. And secretly, I was actually rooting for it. Yes, Argentina against France, beautiful final. I mean, uh, it will, will be exciting for sure. Um, but I, I was rooting for a little bit more drama because both games kind of plodded a little bit along. The second one I thought was the slightly better team thanks to a very spirited Moroccan performance. So that's that was kind of my overall feeling. But uh, I, I would say let's jump into the game and let's talk about Argentina-Croatia. As, as I said, I really thought that early on in this game and... Uh, <laughs> I was a little bit distracted early, early on, but uh, from Volvo, like I said, I thought that Croatia did not only have more of the ball, but uh, Argentina was hanging really, really back. And the most remarkable thing from Argentina's perspective for me is that Scaloni seemingly hasn't found his lineup yet. This cannot be uh, interpreted in two ways. Either he is always looking at the opponent and making the adjustments according to his squad. And yes, he had also two uh, suspensions to deal with. So this, this could be one thing, or he really hasn't found his lineup yet and he's, he's experimenting by metting along. To the credit of Argentina is that they kept tight and didn't allow Croatia any chances. Uh, can I also, also say I really find those Croatia wagers is absolutely beautiful. The only problem is that I don't like the other sleeve because they're kind of this lie lie blue is a little bit washed over, but it's beside the point. And then once Croatia cracks, there is a counter. Uh, a counter. Uh, Al Alvarez tries to lob Livakovic, and Livakovic is brought down after this lob. Uh, for me, it was a clear penalty. I don't know why people are, are discussing that it wasn't because um, the way Livakovic makes himself bigger, he just brings down the opponent. Uh, I know maybe a few year, years ago this would not have been because he got the shot off, but you know. If he makes a pass and is, is mowed over, it's a penalty. If he shoots and is mowed over, it's a penalty. I I honestly don't re, 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 re see it. Um, since Livakovic didn't go for like uh, to really take him out, but you know just make him bigger and makes a kind of move, 
I also, also think it was not necessarily a red card, but it was a penalty. And what a penalty that was from Messi. I mean, that's the hang it up in the Louvre, if you like. That's the perfect penalty. This is how you should take a penalty. And yeah, Messi is not a penalty master. But if you want to take take a shot, I don't want to see. That's the one I want to see. I don't like. I really don't like the rolled penalty. Although I understand why it's by son. I like my penalties to be taken, run up and high in the corner. That's that. I also think the panel that Messi was probably a little bit nervous on that one. That's why he went for power. I really think so because Livakovic is a penalty killer. He knew the only way that I can get past this, this goalkeeper is with full on power. And that's what actually happened here. Uh, and then Croatia, who actually was um, complaining that potentially they should have had a corner before <laughs> that goal, but you know. It's not reviewable. They had then a corner and that corner went right past them. And Messi got probably his least important assist of all time. I think in his own half, a uh, header towards Alvarez, who then plows through and whatever the Croatian defenders tried. I mean, uh, it was a little bit of naive defending, but they had the ball, it falls Al uh, Alvarez's path. They had the ball, it falls Alvarez's path. They had the ball, and Alvarez uh, puts it into the net. It was really just pure trucking power uh, to get that goal. And at 2-0, I joked, yes, Croatia has Argentina right where they want to have him because Argentina always had a 2-0 lead and just one goal will mess everything up for Ar 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 Argentina. But realistically, this was a very much a team performance and especially in the second half when then Orzic, Vlasic and Petkovic came on in sh short succession where um, um, Dalic really tried to do a little bit more. Uh, Krisha did not have either the energy or Ar Argentina just stifled them. Um, and then came Messi's magic moment. If you re-watch that goal, what I find very interesting, I think there was the Paul wants to take a, a throw in and there is Perisic actually pushing the ball from his hand to the, uh, the um, Archer team behind him, which I thought was such a funny, funny scene. And then the ball comes to Messi, who is uh, alone against Guardiol. And Guardiol, in many ways, does all the right things. He, he, he doesn't want to foul him. Uh, he is next to Messi and he doesn't get to the ball. He doesn't get to the ball. Messi just runs, uh, t twists and turns and serves his right to Alvarez to put, put in internet. I have to say, uh, I actually think Guardiol overall did it quite, quite well. He probably should have fouled Messi, but also uh, at the same time, Lovren should have. Lovren should have also helped him out a little bit. Uh, there because they were just hang, hang, hanging back. So that, that was my... But it was a magic moment from Messi. And while I think first half both goals are more down to Alvarez, this Alvarez goal was more down to Messi. So um, it was the Messi-Alvarez show, as I said in a short video. You could see in the celebrations afterwards um, how loose Messi is. He's celebrating. He seems so uh, free because I think he doesn't have to wait on the shoulder. This was, from our Argentina overall, this was a really a defensive team performance. Allowing Messi to just amble around the pitch and just participate if he decides to do so. Which is something probably that they need. I mean, it seems a little bit odd that this is more odd than game that you can play a game with 10 men plus one extra. Um, but that seemingly works at the moment for Argentina. The celebrations were wild. We will have, I guess, loads of Argentinian fans in the World Cup final, although World Cup finals tend to, uh, tend to have not so many fans. But that was also something I found remarkable and how the team rallies around him. And uh, especially, I have not seen Messi dancing. And, and you know, when, when, when he was young, I remember him celebrating a goal against Arsenal, uh, sitting on the floor like a child from Barcelona. But other than that, I have him seen mostly stern. So seeing him that uh, loose is kind of nice. They are in the final, Messi's second final. Um, let's see where this goes. And in this final, Argentina, as we said already, will meet Le Bleu, who beat Morocco 2-0. And I honestly gotta say, before we go in, in, in this game, um, while I 
really would have minded. I actually would have enjoyed Morocco making it to the final, making it the people's final with the two largest fan groups still present in Qatar meeting in the, in the final. I also think when I lo look at it, if Messi should win this World Cup, he should have at least beaten one major nation. Yes, the Dutch maybe count somewhere there, but they're not a former world champion and this Dutch team is not uh, of the high standard as others are. So I actually felt then to really have a measuring stick, though to not, if Messi really should win this World Cup, I don't, I find that he needs to have beaten one big nation to get there. Uh, and yes, again, I said Croatia is among the big nations now. Uh, the Netherlands probably count a little bit there as well. However, they're not of the same caliber as a former world champion. I think this is what well, is needed to kind of have a little bit of validation behind that triumph. The game for France started just beautifully. Uh, and it is such a testament kind of to Deschamps to, you know, he wanted to play more open. He brought Benzema back. Uh, and, and it's over there that Benzema is out. Uh, some other people are all, also out. So we revert back to the kind of a little bit restrained France that we saw at the 2018 World Cup. However, not with the defensive solidity. Still quite some spark up, up front. There's still the, uh, a, a really good offense. And, and, and so, but all, overall, there. I find there is restraint in there. We saw it against England. They do when it needs to be done. Uh, the same thing was here. It worked perfectly for, for them. They actually, I guess at the beginning, I mean, within five minutes, you can say, but uh, they wanted to hold back and hit Morocco on a counter -attack. Say, Morocco, you have the ball because you have not shown us that. And it, Varane uh, catch, catches the Moroccan defense once out of position, plays it into Griezmann, who is suddenly free. He plays a ball in, goes to Mbappé, who doesn't really get the shot uh, well off. Then there's uh, many Moroccan defenders trying to cover him up and Giroud in the middle. I think the ball in goes either then via Giroud on to the side, where it's Theo Hernandez out free, who acrobatically slots it home. Fifth minute, and that's exactly... 100% what France wanted to have. They wanted to have that one lead. Because now they really could look back and say, Morocco, come our way. That was absolutely uh, the match plan and it worked beautifully. I was over the moon and I think one reason that I'm really swinging over towards France is because they have two Milan players and two prominent ones. You saw the first one who's congratulated Theo Hernandez was Olivier Giroud. That's my Milan buddies. If there was Mike Mignon in goal, I would be, I mean, <laughs> it would be perfect. Absolutely perfect for me. But you know, uh, I really was happy for Theo to score as well. And can I also say this number 22. This is the most beautiful numbers stylistically of the entire World Cup. These two and then double double with the slight, slight swing there, it, it's wonderful. I actually, I should get the French jer jer jersey with Theo Hernandez uh, on the back. So just saying, yeah. In any case, it's 1-0 France. France can hold back. Uh, Giroud has two big chances. I mean, they hit him on counter. Giroud once hits the post. It was a little bit off and then another big chance. However, uh, a really odd decision in the 27th minute happened when Theo Nantes has the ball, wants to dribble out. Uh, he kind of loses it towards Buffal, uh, makes a tackle to get it back, plays it, but also mows over Buffal in his own box. And while I can see that the referee maybe at first thought this uh, could have been a foul, when you look at it in replay, this could have been a penalty. I'm not sure if you need to give a penalty, uh, but I, at least it would have been nice to say to the ref, you know, maybe have a look at VAR there. What definitely was also right is that Buffal got the yellow card because he was just standing there. He was literally just standing there. So uh, that is maybe that, that that was one contentious decision. But up until that point, uh, I, I would say up until the 35th minute, France had that game overall, seeding the ball to Morocco, hitting them on the counter-attack. And before we go now, how Morocco then really sailed back 
and actually made a very heroic effort, futile effort. I want to note that the Jersey matchup, although I didn't like it as much as France against Australia, I really was happy that Morocco did not play in white with green pants, but in red, uh, green and white. It was interesting. Although I think it might have been more pleasing if they would have played in the white shirts and then the green pants and then with white down, but um, because the both shirts were rather dark overall. But you know, it was this for another video. Morocco had actually a chance, uh, I think around the tenth minute, but as I said, France controlled it and then they came back. There was a bicycle kick in there uh, that. Seemingly hit the post, but when you see the replay, uh, Yoris has his hand there as, as well, and then they created chances. It is just that they brought themselves into good position, but their finishing was completely off. Especially, so this, this was happening just before the half, and then after, after that, there were a few CC situations where the French defense looked shaky, but they were holding together at their seams. And for I think the first 10 15 minutes of the second half, it really seemed that Morocco is about to score it. I think it would have been a really interesting game, at least, if Morocco would have scored, although then I think Morocco would, would have re retreated. But what this showed to me, and that's why I want to laud Morocco, is that they are not only a team that can defend very well, they actually can attack very well as well. They just don't have the absolute skill up front. Um, many say that Mbappé was kind of quiet through the game, but I have to say his runs really hurt Morocco. Uh, he... He wasn't maybe he desperately won one 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 moment to score a goal uh, because he knew he is now level with Messi on five goals each, but uh, it did not work. But he had I think one very early or the second half where he just <laughs> he went through he was through it and he he just wanted to play the pass back. Another really smart move, although I personally didn't like it, was by. Uh, their shot to taking Giroud off and putting Thuram on because at this moment it was clear that France will uh, get counter attack chances and Giroud is not the best uh, person to play uh, there. Thuram has a lot more en en energy and while um, uh, um, Ragregui tried to throw everything at France in the end I think uh, from the kind of the 60th to about the 85th minute France had the game Firmly under under control. The brilliant Colo Muni and again Mbappe run shot is deflected, falls to uh, Muni and it's two 0 France. And at that moment, I'm saying, okay, that's the game. I don't see France come back. Yes, they had one situation where they had uh, some optional defending where um, Kunde had to clear off the line and probably Morocco would have deserved the goal uh, in that game. But in the end, I think France saw this through quite comfortably. Uh, and we have the big final coming up. It is the final, as I said, Messi against Mbappé, both on five goals. Maybe whoever will score will win the golden boot as well. I have to say Griezmann, best player in this French team. Uh, the way he's working for it for, for, for this team, it's a little bit uh, like Mateus, who went from kind of an offensive role to a more defensive role. I mean, wow, 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 once he got older, although it's a little bit reverse because Mateus I think, started as defensive midfielder. He was man marking Maradona in the 86 final, then went offense, and then in the latest he became a sweeper. That's an interesting one. And yeah, we have in the final also Messi will break, speaking of Lothar Mateus, his record if he was about to play, but I think he will very likely play that final. Uh, it's for me, team with superstar against a team that also has a superstar. But I think that France is the more complete team. Both have had not always convincing performances, but it will be an interesting one. I will do a proper preview at the moment. Based on the ratings and everything, Argentina is a slight favorite, 56 to 44. Third plus match of Croatia, of course, are favorites over Morocco. This Morocco team, I, I, I don't know, it will be, you know, third, 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 third plus match is maybe not the most in, 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 interesting one. Both of these happen actually early. They have both the four o'clock slot. I think it's a great final. I don't expect a great game though. But who knows, maybe it will be the 4-3 that we had last time.
in any case, that was it for me from the semifinals with my thoughts. I will definitely give you a preview of the final um, and my thoughts on that one. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.